Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Another week of fun. Big fun for everyone. I have no catchphrase. Um, hey, everybody. It is James Arnold Taylor. This is my podcast. You are listening. Well, I hope you're listening. If you're not listening, that'd be kind of weird because then how would you know that I'm saying you're listening? What? I don't get it. Anyways, what is going on? It is May 14th. The podcast comes out tomorrow, May 15th. So may the 15th be with you. I don't know. Look, I appreciate all the Star Wars fans, all the May the 4th be with you, all that stuff. But it becomes obsessive. It, it For me, the, you know, for the ADHD, OCD guy, it becomes too much. <laughs> Like my buddy Mark Hamill last year, was it last year? He did the whole, like he did a May the whatever for every single day. It, it drives me crazy. Not what I'm saying is it's like, I go, I can't, my brain will just, it's going to explode. So uh, anyways, I hope everybody had a great May the 4th back then, but it's fine. We don't need to do any more May, May the whatevers or anythings and all of that. And it's okay. All right. I hope you're having a great week. You're in the middle of the week. That's the nice thing about the podcast coming out on a Wednesday. Why do I do it on Wednesdays? Because in the middle of the week, sometimes you need that extra little, ah. yes, that is a specific, uh, that's a technical term. Ah. I need a little, ah. so I'm going to, you know, all right, I'm going to listen to James Arnold Taylor's podcast. I'm rambling, but that's okay, right? Uh, because it could be worse. I could have Hank in here rambling. And, you know, I heard my name. How do you, I mean, like, the second I say your name, you're, like, in here. Yeah, 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 I heard my name. Well, yeah, no, you said you said my name. Hello, 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 hello. Testing your microphone. Would you stop it? Stop it. It's the same thing every time you come in. You hello, hello, hello. You test the microphone. Yeah, but people love it, you know? Okay, yeah, I, I guess people like you. I like me. Well, you should, you know what, actually, Hank, you should like you. In fact, everybody listening, you know what you need for the James Arnold Taylor podcast. When you're listening to the James Arnold Taylor, you need a big glass of water, which, ooh, I have forgotten mine in the other room. I need to get it. And, uh, you know, if Hank was nice, he'd go get it for me. What, you, uh, get your water? Now, in fact, no, you know what? I don't want you going to get my water because you always drink my water. How do you know I didn't drink from it now? Yeah, you're right. It was in the other room and you were in the other room. Ugh. Hey, Billy. Billy! Yes, Mr. Taylor, sir. Mr. James, sir. Mr. Taylor, Taylor, sir. Wait. Billy, how are you? It's been a while. We haven't had you on the show in a while. No, no, no. I've been very busy doing things for Hank. That's Mr. Hank. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, you say Mr. Hank. Hey, Hank. You don't make him... He doesn't... He just call you Hank. Well, no, I'm, I'm fine either way. That's okay, Billy. Billy, would you do me a favor and get me my water? Because, you know... I. I'm in the middle of the podcast. Normally, see, I don't like asking people to do things like that for me. But since you're the intern for the show. No, no, I mean, it's absolutely, it's my job. I'm happy to go get your water for you. Yes, absolutely. No, no, I'll be right back. Get water. Get okay, so it's just you and me, Hank. Anyways, I was saying. Yeah, you were saying, you say, I'm going to make sure you're doing the podcast. Uh, okay, for, I don't talk like that. Whatever. And oh, so, okay, so no, what was I saying? You make sure you got, if you're listening to James Arnold Taylor podcast, you got to have water and you got to do uh, things. You got to like yourself. That's what I was talking about, liking myself and like, or no, you liking yourself. Yeah, I like me. I'm pretty good. All right. But don't, you know, don't like go crazy with the liking yourself. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's like, you know, you don't want to become like full of yourself. Ego. Egomaniacal. I am egomaniacal. I, oh, I, what are you doing? I don't know, I was creating the character. You leave the uh, leave the characters to me, okay? Okay, whatever. I'm right there, and I'm in, and I get the water. Okay, that's all right. So calm down, calm down, Billy. Thank you, appreciate that. The old water. Ah, that's good water. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. I just I'm glad you're enjoying that water. Oh boy, I don't trust him. <clears throat> it reminds me of that movie Weird Science where uh, Bill Paxton says, Did you spit in this? Not that I'm aware of, Chet. That's very funny. I hope you didn't spit in my water, Hank. No, I wouldn't do that. That's gross. All right. Okay, anyways, um, well, I'm, gl I'm glad you think it's gross. Uh, anyways, if you're, 
uh, drink some water when you're listening to James Arnold Taylor podcast. Uh, think, uh, okay, this is this is how this is how we start our day in the Taylor House. We start with some prayer, and we also this stuff I got from Norman Vincent Peale from the Power of Positive Thinking. These are little uh, positive affirmations you could say every day to yourself. So I start with I believe, I believe, I believe. Okay, so say it with me now. We're going to say it three times. I believe, I believe, I believe. Ready? I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe in it, believe in it, believe in it. Very good, Hank. Believe, believe, believe. Okay, guys, I'm going to just, you, you you can say it quietly to yourselves as because we need to leave room for everybody else to say it, okay? Yes, Mr. James, sir. Just James. Sir James a lot. Okay. Whatever. Okay, you say, I believe, I believe, I believe. And when you say that, what are you saying? What do I believe? Well, you, you are affirming your faith. If you are, if you're a person of faith, you're affirming your faith. If you're a person that believes in whatever else, I don't know, just you're affirming your belief system. You're saying, I do believe I, do, I but you're, what you're really saying with that is you're, you're believing in the best for that day. Okay. So then, then you go on to say these things. Now, you can write these down. If you're listening and you're able to write something down right now, write it down. If not, mark the timer on where it is on the show and come back to these things and write them down. I would ask all of you to learn these. And, and again, you can go buy the books, The Power of Positive Thinking uh, by Norman Vincent Peale and some of his other books. But these are in, I believe these are in The Power of Positive Thinking. So I'll give you these. I take no credit for these. These are not mine. These are Norman Vincent Peale's. Uh, it was a great pastor and uh, inspirational speaker and theologian and such. And uh, here you go. So you say, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Stop it. Um, And then you say, I believe this is going to be a wonderful day. So let's say it together. I believe this is going to be a wonderful day. Good. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. Okay, you got that? I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. Ready? Here we go. I believe that I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. Okay? Now, go deeper on that. What does it mean? When you are then experiencing something later in the day, tell yourself, I told myself already that I will be able to handle this. Because you will. Because at the end of each day, no matter what has happened, if you lay your head down to rest and you're still alive, you're still breathing, you still got food in your your body, you still got water in your system, you still have... uh, the ability to be listening to this podcast, then that means you're probably all right, okay? You may be beaten up a little, but you're not beaten down. You're not done, okay? So I believe this is going to be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. Now we say, I feel good physically, mentally, and emotionally. Ready? I feel good physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now, what does that mean? That means... Because you could be going, James, I don't feel good physically, mentally, or emotionally. I got a headache. I've got a stomach ache. I don't feel good. I feel this, that, or whatever. I think I'm getting a cold. It doesn't matter. You are putting positive affirmations into your brain, into your body, into your life. You are speaking them out. You can go, geez, James, this seems a little corny, a little new agey, a little whatever. Guess what? Scientists have shown that this type of stuff works. Saying it, believing it, taking it to heart digesting it into your body and your life. They show it works on the human brain. So we are putting positive. That's why you listen to this show. You want to laugh. You want to be entertained. You want to be inspired. So I believe it's going to be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. I feel good physically, mentally, emotionally. You are telling yourself that you do. Even if you don't right now, you're telling yourself, I do, because you are creating new patterns in your brain, new reflexes, because the old reflexes want to say, oh, I'm tired. Oh, this. Oh, I'm going to complain about this. Oh, I'm going to think of negative stuff. Oh, I'm going to go into circular thinking. No, 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 no. Okay. We're, we're, we're creating new dialogues, new affirmations, new positivities for you. And I am telling you from somebody that has experienced All of those things, anxiety, panic, depression, uh, all this stuff in my life, this works. You got to stick to it. You got to keep doing it. You've got to believe it. That's why you start with, I believe, I believe, I believe. You are in turn saying, I believe what I'm about to digest into my brain, into my mind, into my body, into my soul. I believe it's going to be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. I feel good physically, mentally emotionally. It's wonderful to be alive. Okay. It's wonderful to be alive. 
I'm grateful for all that I've had, for all that I now have, and for all that I shall have. Okay? Why? Because look to the look to the past and you may go, but my past is hard. Yes, but you know what? There's also a lot of good things that have gotten you to that point. How do I know that? Because you're you're able to be sitting either on a computer or on your iPhone or your smartphone with your earbuds in, listening to this podcast right now. Your life has probably had some good in it because it's gotten to the ability to where you actually have clothes on your back, food in your belly, and the ability to be listening to this podcast. Okay. Now, I, I never try to pull like that, the whole like, oh, feel bad because there's people in worse situations in the planet, but there are, okay? And there's a lot of people that will never hear this podcast. There's a lot of people that will never have the opportunity to hear any podcast, any music from any device or anything. We are blessed, whether you live in the States or you're listening to this from some other country, which many of you are. Uh, but if you have the ability to be sitting, listening, standing, driving, whatever, listening to this You've had some good things happen in your past. So I'm grateful for all that I've had, for all that I now have, and for all that I shall have. Saying in the future, just as many good things will happen. Because we're not focusing on the negative things, you see? Now here's a good one. Things aren't going to fall apart. God is here and he is with me and he will see me through. Things aren't going to fall apart. God is here and he is with me. And he will see me through. Now, if you don't believe in God, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm telling you, this is the thing. This is from the book. And this is what I say. And it's what I believe. And the, the, my higher power is God. And that God is Jesus Christ. And I am a Christian. And so that's what I believe. So I believe it's going to be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all problems that will arise today. I feel good physically, mentally, emotionally. It's wonderful to be alive. Remember that one. It's wonderful to be alive. You can say that throughout the day. It's wonderful to be alive. Remember, even if you're not believing it at that moment, say it and start to believe it. Okay? It's wonderful to be alive. Things aren't going to fall apart. Things aren't going to fall apart. Okay? If you, if you don't believe in God, at least believe that one. Things are not going to fall apart. How do you know? It's like I said earlier. If by the end of your day, you still lay your head down to rest and you still have had a meal and water and, and, and life and you've breathed in air, no matter what's happened to you, you are, you are getting rest and you've listened to this podcast and that means you've had the ability to take in good things too. So things are not going to fall apart. God is here. He is with me. He will see me through. And then lastly, we say, I thank God for every good thing. Now, again, if you don't believe in God, I guess you could say, I'm thankful for every good thing. Okay? Of course, me, as a Christian, I want to say, give it a shot. Thank him and ask him in. But, hey, man, whatever. Whatever flips your switch, right, Hank? Hey, I, I, I flipped the switch. No, don't flip that switch. <laughs> What? 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 I said flip switch. I was talking. Yeah, well, you know, I only hear half of what you say. You shut down the entire podcast. We had that. So everybody, we had to reboot because he flipped the switch. There's like, why? By the way, you know, because, you know, you're the engineer here for the uh, James Arnold Taylor podcast. Why is there one big switch just like on a cartoon like the Acme that you just switched over and turned everything off? Well, you know, I like to make things easy. You know, at the end of the day, you're done in your studio. I like to. No, don't do that. To on, come on! Stop with the big switch. You know there should be like a glass thing around that, and you have to then break the glass. You don't. He's got this for all of you because you can't see. There's this gigantic switch in here, like a big crunk, you know, and he keeps switching it off. Because I said flip the switch, flip the switch. No, no. Come on. All right, Hank, get out of here. You're banned. What do you mean I'm banned? I believe this is gonna be a wonderful day. I believe I can successfully handle all James that will arise today. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. I feel good physically, mentally, and emotionally. It's wonderful to be alive on the James Donald Taylor podcast. All right. Thank you. Go. Uh, can you have Mr. Announcer Guy come in? Yes, James. Hi, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hello there. How are you? I feel good physically, mentally, and emotionally. It's wonderful to be alive. Well, thank you. So you do the positive affirmations as well, then? Yes, I do, James, every day. I, I hope people write it down, learn it, live it, breathe it in. Because it's just good stuff. Look, it doesn't hurt you. 
no matter what you believe, to say things like that and to be positive. In fact, as I mentioned before, scientifically, they've shown it helps the brain. That's right. And look at how happy I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are happy. So can you introduce the show then? It would be my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the James Arnold Taylor podcast, talking to myself, the Jetcast. Now, here he is, the guy that does all the voices on the show. You're talking kind of, what's that? I'm stretching my announcement so it matches the music bed and ends at the same time. Oh, okay, I got it. Sorry, go ahead. James Arnold Taylor. Oh, see, you stretched, you went a little too long, and then... Yeah, then I had to fit the music and finish before it ended and all that. Yeah, well, you know, we can always edit the bed. I know, but I like to talk up the music. Yeah, that's an old DJ expression. Mr. Announcer Guy, so I was a DJ uh, back when I was younger. Were you a DJ then? Yeah, man, of course. Spinning the tunes. Or yeah, what kind of radio station did you work at? I worked at a oldies station. We played all the old, oldie, Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and all those guys. Oh, that's cool. I worked at an oldies station as well. Yeah, I know. Of course you know. Yeah, because we're both the same person. That's right. All right. Okay. I'll see you later then. I'm seeing you now. Okay, I don't, I don't get that. All right. Bye-bye. He's going to go now. Okay. Well, so that's, you know, how we do it. We've already had our, we've had our little positive affirmations. We've had some water. We've talked to Hank and Billy. Billy, are you still here? Yes, sir. I'm right here, sir. I'm just quietly sitting and listening to the show. Watching and wondering. Uh... <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Billy. You can, you can go do stuff, though. You don't need to sit and watch the show. No, I, 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 like, I like watching the show. Okay. You just sit there, then. Okay. Now you're kind of staring at me, making me uncomfortable. No, I'm sorry. It's Mr. James, sir. Just James. James, 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 James. Yeah. So, here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, what's going on? Well, we've got a lot going on. You know what? I'm going to sit down. I've been standing. I'm going to sit. And adjust the desk. And the desk goes down. And I sit. I sit and stand. I, you know what I did last night? I was um, watching... I was watching... Uh, I, I actually needed to look at an old episode of Clone Wars Conversations for a thing. And we'll talk about Clone Wars Conversations here today. For those of you that don't know, again, my name is James Arnold Taylor. I'm a voice actor. I do the voices for uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi for Star Wars and such, and Plo Koon and many other characters in the world of Star Wars. And so, because of that, I uh, have hosted a lot of things and stuff and worked in that. And then I have a YouTube channel where I do videos, and I had a show on there called Clone Wars Conversations because I was on the show Clone Wars where I played Obi-Wan Kenobi. And so on that show, I interviewed some of my castmates and friends of uh, that were on the show with me. And I did one season of the show. And yes, many people are asking if I'll do another uh, season of the show. I would love to do another season of the show. Right now, it's just not priority on my list because I've got, uh, I'm making this film, Sons and Daughters is the name of the film, last week on the uh, JackCast Mini. I read to you the treatment. Many of you responded very positively to that, and I thank you for that. Um, in fact, everybody responded positive. Positive, positive. Pa, 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 pa. I'm turning into Porky Pig. Really well. Uh, to the uh, podcast, or to the, <laughs> to the, uh, the reading of that on the podcast. But that's not where I was going. So I was watching uh, some Clone Wars conversations last night. So for all of you, yes, I will try to make another season of that at some point. Anyways, and then it got me going, you know what, I'm going to look at some of my videos because I have this YouTube channel and I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel. I think there's over 500 videos on my YouTube channel. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, here's why it's crazy, because I only started the channel back in 2016, really. That's like when I really started putting content up. I had been putting little bits and pieces of things on the channel throughout, you know, for years, but didn't really start until 2016, 2015, 2016. I don't know. I think 2016. Start putting, it doesn't matter. Oh, do I drive you crazy when I do that? I do it a lot. I listen back and I go, well, just shut up, James. Okay. No, actually, I don't say shut up. In fact, I've made a deal. I've made a deal with my daughter that I will not say shut up. We say shut up uh, because, well, uh, Guinevere, who uh, is a fan of the show. Guinevere, if you're listening, hello. Guinevere says, shut up. All the time. 
And so we started saying that, but, uh, but I don't want to be rude. So I don't want to say shut up uh, wrongly. So, so I've told my daughter, if I say shut up in the wrong way, I owe her five bucks. <laughs> All right. So she's trying to get me to say shut up now because she get money anyways. Um, because I, you know, I don't really swear curse or anything. So I guess the worst is, is I would say something like shut up. Like if, if, you know, it's like, sh- sh- wait, wait, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, like that. Like, I don't go like, shut up, you stupid. Like, I'm not that. But I I just, you know, you try not to, you try, you try to put positivity out there. So shut up is not a real positive thing. Unless uh, Guinevere is saying it. And Guinevere uh, is very funny when she says it. She's like uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus on Seinfeld saying shut up. Like, like I can basically what she's saying is I can't believe it. Anyways, way off on a tangent back to uh, my YouTube channel. If you don't know about the James Arnold Taylor YouTube channel, will you please subscribe? Will you please go to YouTube today? Search for James Arnold Taylor, find my little picture there and subscribe to my channel. There's about, uh, I think almost 50,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And many of you are listening to this podcast on the James Arnold Taylor YouTube channel. No, there's 45,000. Sorry, there's 45. I got, I jumped the gun. I wish there was a lot more subscribers. I wish there was more of you. And I'm, I'm but I am so grateful for all of you that are, are actually on the James Arnold Taylor uh, YouTube channel. There is lots of stuff on my channel here. Clone Wars Conversations, Jat Vlogs, the podcast, In the Booth with Jat, Jat Show, Jat 365, a video every day of the year you could watch. A certain point of Jat, a certain point of view. Ask Jat. Those are fun. Hey, if you again, if you don't know my channel, go to the YouTube channel and watch some of these things. There's a fun. The fun ones are uh, these ones I did called Ask Jat, where I interview myself. And in those, if you watch the video, it's two of me. And I had a lot of fun putting those together because it's a split screen thing. And uh, why isn't the first one in there? Is it not in there? It's not in there. That's kind of silly, isn't it? That the first ask Jat? Oh, wait, yeah, there it is. One, two, three. Oh, they're out of order. Anyways, so uh, yeah, I ask myself questions. I interview and I answer your emails on that. So that was a fun show and I, I should do more of those, but uh, but I've been putting all my efforts into this podcast, so which is easy. I could interview myself here, easy, because I don't have to split the screen or anything. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm doing really good, James. Thanks, how are you? See, it's, it's, it's simple. But um, anyways, I was watching some of the vlogs and some of the old uh, things on there, and I was looking at like my old studio that I built, and it's it's sad because I don't have a I don't have a video studio anymore, production studio. I, I shut it down. It was getting expensive, and um, that's where I shot Clone Wars conversations, and that's why I'm not doing more of them right now because I don't have that space. But um, you know, but maybe I'll I'll build something out again at some point after I'm done making uh, this movie. But the movie uh, the movie is doing well, and. Uh, I'm just trying to schedule it and get everybody scheduled. I got my first rejection letter because I've sent it out. I sent the script out to various places to see if they would uh, help, you know, fund the film. So I got my first rejection letter yesterday from Pure Flix. Now, some of you that listen may know Pure Flix and they make a lot of, they make a lot of big movies now. Um, And so the funniest part about it was, and I'm not knocking them at all. So please, you know, don't get mad at Pure Flix. But essentially, they told me my movie was too Christian for them <laughs> because they're going in a new direction and they're not wanting to make things that are so blatantly Christian. Well, look, uh, and, and one of you, uh, MC Lego Boy, I think, sent me a comment on on YouTube saying, oh, you know, sent me a, a, a comment from with a, a link to a fellow that is a uh, a Christian filmmaker and writer who made a YouTube video, you know, why are Christian films not good? And, you know, look, there's a lot of uh, Christian movies that are a little more corny and are a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, poorly executed and poorly acted. And I certainly don't want to have one of those. I don't want this film to be one of those. In fact, the reason, so the film that I'm making, Sons and Daughters, is shot as a documentary. I did that on purpose because I'm on a limited budget. And when you shoot as a documentary, then there's a lot more leniency for the film, uh, the look of the film not being a cinematic experience where the lighting has to be perfect and all of that and the the shots have to be, you know, cut to this and that and the other. So it's it's more supposed to be like found footage because that's what you can do when you want to make a film on the cheap. If you make it, if you, if you basically say, 
you show all all of the, you know, um, you don't. There's an expression I'm looking for. I can't find the expression. Billy, you know what that expression is? No, 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 no sir, I don't even know. Flaws and all. Yeah, flaws and all. Yeah, but uh, that's not it. But thank you. You're welcome, sir James. Just James. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No warts and all, Billy. That's what warts. Warts and all. No. Yeah, I know it's it's gross, but yeah, there you go. Warts and all. Okay. Sir. Okay. Um, you know, you just put it out there. If you're making something and you're like, see, I think people try to make something bigger than it is with a lesser budget and a lesser ability or a lesser knowledge. And so I know documentaries. I know how they look and sound and feel and all that. And I know a lot of, a lot of people don't like documentaries. They find them boring or whatever. So there'll be some people that won't want to see my movie because it's a documentary. Well, it looks like a documentary. It feels like a documentary. It's not a real documentary. It's a fake documentary. But in turn, so anyways, uh, yeah, P- uh, Pure Flix, they were like, you know, that's a good idea. I like that. I think it's clever and all of that. And it's good. It's a good take on the prodigal son story and all of that. But we're not looking for uh, overtly Christian films anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, what do you do? Um, but, uh, anyways, but they did say that maybe when it's done, if I just produce it on my own, that perhaps they'll, uh, distribute it if they like it. So I got that going for me. (laughs) And, you know, look, I, I bandied about the thought of doing a Kickstarter campaign and stuff, but you know, I just, all the fundraising, the crowd fundraising stuff, I just don't do it. You know, I was going to do Patreon and then I decided not to do Patreon because I just feel like Patreon is just not for me. Um, it's just not, and I have friends that do Patreon and that's great, but, um, you know, I, I'm not comfortable asking people for money and, uh, and I, you know, I have the means to make this film on my own. So I'm going to just try. The biggest thing is, is I want to pay my actors because the problem is, is everybody's kind of doing favors for me and I don't like that. So I want to pay everybody. So instead we're doing it under the SAG because I, I have to do it as a SAG film because I'm a SAG actor. I'm with the SAG, meaning the Screen Actors Guild, and I'm a member of it proudly and uh so everybody in the film will be sag actors and they will uh get paid a sag rate but because uh the sag allows you to do it under what they call the ultra low budget rate so i mean basically everybody's making just a little more than a hundred dollars a day and 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 this is literally coming out of my pocket uh so you know that's that's how you make a film when you just want to make a film and and so every day i kind of question myself and you I, i here i'm just kind of going on here off on a tangent because it may help you those of you that are creative those of you that are trying to kind of do stuff on your own and you may feel kind of like what am i doing so you know that even somebody that is a successful actor in hollywood that wants to make their own kind of thing still struggles with these things like you know every day i wake up and kind of go should i be putting all my time and effort and energy into this film because at the end of the day there's a very good chance i can make the whole thing and it may end up just on my youtube channel (laughs) you know um and nobody wants to distribute it or or take it in or anything or you know there there's a chance that that could happen um there's a chance it won't be as good as i think it is going to be you know uh, at that point i i probably wouldn't put it out but so we're going to start shooting some scenes we're going to shoot some of Catherine Tabor's scenes uh monday next monday the 20th and i may shoot one or two of my scenes before then now i have grown a beard i've grown my hair out and i've grown a big beard uh, which, uh, I haven't put in a lot of videos out lately, so you wouldn't know what I look like now, but I have a big white beard, big Obi-Wan beard, and my hair's longer because that's what the character is. And I'm also supposed to play, uh, considerably older than, um, all my co-stars. And I am older than everybody. I'm older than Kat. I'm older than, uh, the, the guys. In fact, all the, the guys, AJ and Josh that are playing my sons technically are actually young enough to be my real life sons in real life, even at my age of 49. However, I'm supposed to be playing about 57 years old. So I have to play older, which is fine, except for when you're somebody that has kind of a baby face that everybody always thinks you're about 10 years younger than you are, you have to age yourself up a little. So uh, we may do some makeup to make me look aged. But here's the other issue with that is then I don't want when the cameras are on because it's a documentary and it's supposed to look real, I don't want you to look and see and be able to tell I'm wearing makeup. So as an actor, 
I have to just take on the role of somebody that is older and portray that. So if I act that way more and I believe that this goes back to like kind of believing what you see and feel, uh, then I can do so much even without makeup. But the fact that my beard is white, like Obi-Wan, old Ben Kenobi's beard, like Alec Guinness's beard, it is as white as his. That helps put a lot of age on me. Because, you know, about 10 years ago when I would grow my beard out, it was still kind of what we'd call ginger, you know, kind of red. It was weird. I've always had kind of a reddish beard, but my hair is not red. I have blonde hair, but my beard would grow in a little red. But it does not anymore. It grows in white. Okay. So anyways, so there you go. So um, so I'm doing that, trying to get this uh, all done. And uh, I'm trying to figure out the shooting schedule. So you got to bring people in and figure out days. And then you've got to figure out as many scenes as you can shoot in a day because you want to be respectful of people's time. So my other actors, I don't want this movie to take up 20, 30 days of their lives. I want it to take up five, six days of their lives. But those five or six days will be spread out over the course of maybe two months, maybe even more, depending. Because most of the shots are going to be shot in my house, but some of the shots are bigger shots. Some of them have to be done in places where we have to rent out a space and get permits and deal with all of that. But anyways, so then I have to shoot all of it. Then I have to edit it all. Then I have to do like a, I got to figure out music. Now there's a, there's a band by the name of Jars of Clay that have written some Wonderful music. I'm a big fan of Jars of Clay, and some of you may know them. They are, they're a Christian band, but they're, they were also, they kind of made it back in the 90s, uh, and they crossed over, meaning they weren't, they weren't liked by just Christians because their music was so hip and good. Drinking water? Are you drinking water? But I, when I wrote the script, I wrote it to them. Like I listened to a lot of their music while I was writing. And I, because I find that inspires me. So there are a lot of Jars of Clay's music that I want to use in my film. So that means I'm going to have to try to get rights to those songs, which means I'm going to need a budget to do that. So in the end, I may end up making a movie that costs me, you know, $10,000, but then the rights to the music may cost, you know, $30,000. And so I need somebody to come in and help with that. That's where distribution would help. So that's what I'm hoping and praying for. So if you're praying for old Jat and his movie... Pray for distribution deals. Pray for some cash to come in and help them. <laughs> okay. See, I feel silly even asking, you know, because it's like, I'm, you know, I, I try not to pray for things that, uh, you know, seem materialistic because I don't want to be a materialistic person. I want to just help people in whatever way I can. And I want to help all of you. And that's why I'm grateful for all of you listening to the show. All right. So that's what's going on. So I watched my YouTube channel. I watched some of the stuff and I was inspired by some of it. And I was like, okay. And I was looking back at all the things. Here's the point. I looked back at, um, there's a lot of videos where I'm talking about what I want to accomplish by building the studio back and some of the earlier ones. And the great thing is, is when I look back on it, I actually see that I accomplished most of the things I said. Some of the things never came to fruition. Like I talked about opening a Patreon account. I never did that. I talked about a, vo a voiceover academy. And I never did that. Let me explain why. One of the reasons why is, you know, I had I had been thinking about when I built my studio space that I would have it be a VO academy and I would shoot how-to videos on voiceover and I would put those out and I would make them available for a subscription uh, on my YouTube channel so people would have to pay for that and such. And then my buddy Steve Bloom, of course, you know Steve from so many things, Cowboy Bebop, Rebels, etc. cetera. Uh, he's Wolverine. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful voice actor and a wonderful human being. And Steve ended up, uh, what, about a year, year and a half ago doing that. He opened his, his own like online voiceover academy. And I went, well, there you go. Somebody else did it and they did it great. So I'm not going to do it. So now I just recommend people go to Steve Bloom. If you're really wanting to learn about voiceover and stuff, go to Steve's thing. He's got some great rates and he's got a great, a great thing going there. And so it was just like, good for you, Steve. And I got caught up in making my videos like Clone Wars Conversation, which I really loved producing that show, talking about that show again. Um, and uh, we just had a great time. If you don't know Clone Wars Conversations, again, uh, as I said, it's me interviewing my friends from Clone Wars. So the first season I interviewed, uh, let's see, I started with Anna Graves. I interviewed Anna, who played, of course, the Duchess of Teen. I interviewed uh, Jim Cummings, who played Hondo. I interviewed Phil Lamar. Uh, who was so many characters. I interviewed Jason Spizak. I interviewed Sam Witwer, Matt Lanter, 
Uh, Catherine Tabor came in and was on the Matt Lanter ones. I interviewed um, Angelique Perrin, Ben Diskin. I'm looking at the list now. So there is a total of 14 episodes. And I interviewed myself at the end. I didn't actually interview myself. I kid. Uh, no, Amy Ratcliffe, my friend and blogger and Star Wars nerd. And she would appreciate me calling her a Star Wars nerd. Um, she came in and interviewed me for a two-parter. And that was how we closed the season. So if you have not checked out Clone Wars Conversations, even if you're not a Star Wars fan, check it out. It's, it's a fun show. And we close each episode of that show with me doing a reading with my co-star of the, show, the episode, uh, reading from something in our character voices. And it's always a lot of fun. So uh, like Matt Lanter and I read from Butch and Sundance, which was cool because um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Because I always wanted us to do an episode like that on uh, Clone Wars. And uh, we kind of got to in the episodes that um, were those lost episodes. But I think they're making some of those in the uh, 12. Anyways, all right. I can't talk about what they're doing on Clone Wars. But anyways, there you go. So check out Clone Wars Conversations. Also check out A Certain Point of View. That was a Star Wars debate show. That was a lot of fun. But also check out my vlogs. If you just want to get to know Jad a little bit more and you like my podcast and you've not discovered my YouTube channel, or you've discovered my YouTube channel because you're listening to the podcast on it, but you have not gone back and watched any of the hundreds and hundreds of videos that I've made, go back and look at the playlist entitled Jat Vlogs. And you will find, oh, a lot of videos in there. Let's see how many. Oh my goodness. There are 105 videos in there. And those are Day in the Life's of me and then oh and i do like some readings in those and the jet vlogs i do a day in the life there's a walk in my pocket i read it as michael j fox and christopher walken let's that's fun i read uh green eggs and ham as obi-wan kenobi and johnny test uh i have a story i have a story on my on my uh youtube channel it's a it's a story i wrote in fact you know what i'm gonna play it here and for those of you that that um know it already sorry you're gonna hear it again on the podcast uh, if you don't know it, I'm playing it on the podcast here. So this is a, a short story I wrote. It's called Worried About Worry. And it is, um, uh, it's a short story read and written by me. And my daughter, Lydia, voices the little girl character in it. So uh, let's take a listen to Worried About Worry. Why did I write this? Well, first, before we get to it, I'm going to explain why did I write it. Oh, and on the on, on my YouTube channel, if you watch it, I did all the animation, all the the drawings and stuff too. But why did I make worried about worry? Because I, I'm a worrier. So, or I've been a worrier in my life. I'm not so much a worrier anymore. I try not to be. And I wrote this story to help myself not be a worrier. Sorry, I'm going to turn off my ringer on my phone there. I wrote it to not, to, to help myself. And I think a lot of people, in fact, have listened and liked it. And, um, it's got uh, 4,441 views on my thing, and, and, and so many people really enjoyed it. So I'm going to play it for you here on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast for those of you that do not know it. For those of you that do know it, hear it again for a second time and enjoy. Uh, this is a, a short story by me, James Arnold Taylor. Uh, I'm doing all the voices except for the little girl voice, which is my daughter. So that, that's what makes it fun. This is me and Lydia telling you a story and showing you not to worry. Let's listen to Worried About Worry on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Worried About Worry. Written and performed by James Arnold Taylor. With the additional voice of Lydia Rose Taylor. There once was a little fellow named Worry. And it was an apt name at that. Worry worried more than anyone could. In fact, that made him worry all the more. He worried about breakfast, he worried about lunch, he worried about dinner, he even worried about midday snacks. He worried about what to wear, that is, if he actually wore anything, for you see, worry was simply a bundle of, well, worry, and nothing more. Held together by the past and future worries, while never really concentrating on the present, as that would, uh, yes, that's right, worry him. So worry worried. He worried about what people thought of him, 
But he thought of them. He worried about being late. He worried about being early. He worried that being on time may even be too exact for others and bother them. Which worry wouldn't want to do at all. I mean, just think of it. And worry. Worry, simply put, if you have not already guessed, worried about anything and everything. And when he was done worrying about it all, he'd worry some more. Just to be sure. One day, while Worry was sitting under a big willow tree, he liked the willow because it sounds a bit like Worry, but not too much like it. That would be worrisome and perhaps confusing. But, but let us not bring his cousin confusing into this story. Anyway, where was I? At? Ah, not to worry, I remember. While sitting under that big willow, Worry was worrying about the weather. Would it be hot, or would it be cold? And if it's cold, would it be too cold, or could it be too hot? He worried. He didn't know which was worse. Then, suddenly, he saw a figure coming towards him. And this, goes without saying, was worrying. Our worrisome worrier. I wonder who that is. Oh, what if it's someone I know? What will I say to him? How will I start a conversation? Oh, oh great, yeah. What if we both start to talk at the same time? That's always a possibility. And then there's the confusion and talking over each other and, oh, the worry. But wait, what if it's a stranger? Oh, well, that's all the more reason to worry. If they're mean, they may say or do mean things to me, but if they're nice, they may say nice things to me, and I'll need to find just the right nice things to say back to them, and... Oh, or they may say nice things to simply be nice and not really tell me how they really feel about me. Yeah. Or if they even feel anything about me at all. Oh, what a worry this approaching character brings. The sun was behind this foreboding figure, so only a dark silhouette was visible to worry. So he squinted his eyes as tightly as he could to where they were almost shut, but not quite. Just enough to still see the imminent interloper, but not enough to make out who they were. This seemed the sensible thing to do for someone that worries so. You see, then he could still see them, but not see them enough to know as to avoid a new worry and stay focused on the worry at hand. This worry is safer, it seems, as it doesn't let anyone else in, it, which could be a bigger mistake than letting them out. Oh, the worry. But now, as the being drew closer, squinting couldn't help his ears from hearing. Singing. Songs from this dark and dreadful apparition? Was it a happy or melancholy tune? Best not to listen, thought worry, and he quickly covered his ears using the palms of his hands. He would have much rather stuck his fingers in his ears to plug them tightly, but he hadn't had the chance to wash his hands since seeing this ominous offering and the thought of perhaps spreading germs into his ears that could result in an infection or perhaps a nasty head cold brought a new worry to the table for worry A. Worrywart. Oh, yes, had I forgot to mention Worry's full name? Terribly sorry. Worrywart was his last name, but he much preferred the first half of the last name to the last half, as warts are an ugly and worrisome thing. Oh, but let me proceed so as not to worry you as to what was on the horizon for worry. Now this singing was gaining in volume and distance, and the words were almost clear through his trembling hands and right into his ears, and that worried worry. What if the song was one that he knew, and then it might get stuck in his head? Oh, worrying is a long and difficult task, but alas, worry was an expert, and that brought him some comfort. But is comfort good? Worry thought, and began to worry. It may not be. The singing began to break through, and then his ever-squinting eyes began to grow weary of all the squinting, and so he opened them, as he feared that long-time fable that if he kept them squinted for too long, they would get stuck. And this goes without saying, is a worry for certain. As he opened his eyes with worrisome wonder, he saw to his surprise, not a dark, dastardly devil at all. Instead, he saw a small little gal with pretty pink pleats and a perfectly pressed dress. On this dress she wore were little red roses lightly embossed in lace on the bottom and hearts on the top. She wore sneakers that glittered and tights with socks that seemed to match perfectly though somehow seemed off. Her hair was dark but had a glow of gold. It was drawn up in pigtails and her makeup was ever so perfectly so. Her eyes were bright with blue or were they brown? 
Or green, perhaps. Uh, hazel? They seemed to change each time Worry looked. She had a huge smile, and her teeth sparkled with what looked like little stars when the light hit them just right. Worry hoped the lights wouldn't damage his vision. After all, what would he do if he couldn't see all of his worries? But as he looked at this strange, slender vision, who seemed quite content, he felt for a split second, or perhaps even less, a strange feeling come over him that made Worry worry about not worrying. Hello! Sang the girl with the pigtails and pleats. My name is Presently, would you believe? I'd like to know yours. It'd be a pleasure to receive. Well, now let us go into the mind of our little worrying friend and see if we can see what he was trying to comprehend. She doesn't seem mean. She doesn't seem sad. She doesn't even seem the slightest bit mad. She sings every word that comes out of her mouth. I wonder what happens when she whines or she pouts. Though those don't seem likely for a girl like this. Perhaps it could happen. Perhaps I'll persist. And what's with this rhyming and matching of words? I worry a worrywart have become quite perturbed. From this point on, our tale doth rhyme. Don't ask me to stop it, there just isn't time. Uh, my name is Worry. Worrywart's my name. How wonderful to meet you. I'm glad that I came. But Worry was worried that this might be a ploy to take away something that he'd had since a boy. He wasn't quite sure it made him quite miffed. When presently spoke, his worry would lift. She didn't seem bothered by things in the past, and the thought of the future, why to her, it's too vast. Her name was the way that she lived and she breathed. She wasn't just presently, she was presently pleased. And presently pleased spoke up as she danced and spoke with a song and a sweet happenstance. You say your name's Worry, but I wonder, my friend, is Worry a part of your day start and end? If so, how is it that you'd worry that much? I find life delightful. I find it just such. Such what? Worried worry. Why, how could it be that someone could live without any worry? That's troublesome, naive, preposterous too. Living without worry? Well, what would you do? Excuse me. Asked worry. I beg your dear pardon, but how could you not feel worry in this garden? There's flowers and grass to make you sneeze. There's birds and begonias. Heaven knows that there's bees. All of these things could sting or infect. I beg you, sweet presently, why don't you object? There's so much to worry about right here and right now. I fear that you must be overtaken somehow by madness or perhaps if something far darker. For one not to worry is a very present marker. For safety's sake, let me worry for you. It's easy for me. It's just what I do. But presently, simply smiled. She knew that she knew so much more than he, and she knew what to do to bring change to worry. She took his worried hand. She gave it a kiss. She lifted his arms and held on at his wrists. She stepped back and forth and made him follow suit. He may not have known it, but he was dancing to boot. She gently hummed and stared in his eyes, which at first made Worry worry, but then, surprise, when her eyes locked with his, there was something sure and true. Worry felt peace, and an odd calming, too. She said softly, Now. And that was all that it took for Worry to let go of the worry he forsook. He felt a great love, and strangely nothing more. He knew this was all that feelings were for. To live and to feel, to love and to laugh, to never let go of the presently path. His worry was gone, his fears laid low. He knew in that moment that his worry must go. Be gone for good, yes, that's what he'd need, but how? Oh, how could his worry not feed? Was it magic, a spell? Did she have him deceived? Was his worry really leaving? Could he really believe? How could this presently relieve all his fears? By showing him laughter and joy and good cheers? He tried to ask her, but she simply danced and hummed while she held him. Yes, it felt like a trance, but not one that would hurt or one to destroy. Then worry began remembering what he took on as a boy. All the pressure, the pain, the anger and shame, all the fear and the dread, and of course, all the blame. 
Yes, all of these things became a part of the lad, who wanted to live life and feel happiness clad. But just as we learn to walk, then to run, our feelings can alter. They can become undone. We manage to believe that we're not who we are. We take on the lies that insist we're not far. From being those dreadful and terrible things, alas, they're not true. Not what happiness brings. We believe that it's easier to worry and fear. We believe it's far better, but it's perfectly clear. Our lives don't matter, not one little bit. So yes, it's much easier to worry, and that's it. Oh, how far worry strayed from his real true self. He listened to those lies and put love on the shelf. So he pondered it all as she held him that day, and he hoped it was real. He prayed it might stay. As he danced and she hummed, he began humming too. He wanted to know how to feel presently true. Yes, this was the feeling, this was the time. Life's not meant for worry, life's meant for divine. All that we carry and all that we claim should not be a burden, should not be our name. He began to speak, but only came tears. Not of worry this time, nor of dark, endless fears. He let it happen. Yes, he enjoyed this emotion. He felt no worry, he felt a new notion. One to become at peace with himself and to give a new name. One of goodness and health. He asked without worry what presently thought. He didn't overthink it. He didn't act caught. He allowed the present moment to wash over him well. And as this was happening, his worry did quell. Just then, presently smiled her biggest smile yet, like the pink, blue, and gold of a perfect sunset. She showed worry love. She showed it quite deep. She showed worry that worry was nothing to keep. And as she stared presently into his ever-changing eyes, she said, You are new. Now live life's surprise. As the worry dropped out of his mind's norm, there was quite a change in his physical form. He took on a brightness. He stood up quite straight. His body began moving with a presently gait. He seemed clothed in goodness, in sincere, honest truth. He looked nothing like worry. From his feet past his tooths. Though his eyes were still honest, they now clearly shined, for no longer was there an honest worry on his mind. So worry a worry won't give up worry that day, and presently speaking, he's much happier, I'd say. He forgets and he stumbles, he makes some mistakes, but now when he does, he doesn't return to old traits. He stops, takes a moment, and looks at it anew. For he knows there's very little that all that worry can do. And that is worried about worry. Is that you? I wonder. It's certainly been me in my life. So that's a little short story I wrote, then decided to record. And like I say, it's on my YouTube channel. Many of you may already be familiar with it. Apologies if you've heard it before. And they're like, come on, James, don't fill the podcast with old stuff. No, no. It's a story. You know what it is? It's a story that I I did and put it out there on my YouTube channel and kind of forgot about it. But I probably should do some more with it because it is a, it's a great message. You know, we tend to be that little bundle of worry. And I drew little pictures. If you haven't seen it, you can go to YouTube and watch it. I can see the little pictures I drew of, of worried and presently. And, you know, I'd love it to be a little animated short. I also kind of love that at midway through, I decide it's going to rhyme. And that's my tribute to Dr. Seuss, I guess, because I'm so inspired by Dr. Seuss. And uh, I just, you know, the, the the end part still always kind of gets me as well, because I think that that's the key is what we take on as kids, what we have put on us as children. What it goes back to the beginning of the show with the positive affirmations believing it's going to be a wonderful day, believing you can successfully handle all problems that will arise today, feeling good physically and emotionally, being grateful for what you've had, for what you now have, for what you shall have, knowing that things aren't going to fall apart, that there's no need to worry. That's really the key. 
to our lives. So that's really the challenge today for all of you. What are you worrying about today? What are you allowing to overtake you? What I'd like you to do is write it down and look at it and really see it for what it is. And then also think about, have I dealt with this before? Have I dealt with something similar to this before? And if I have, did I get over it? Clearly, most of us probably did because again, we're here, we're listening, we're, we're breathing, we're living. There's always ongoing problems. There's always ongoing worries. There will always be a worry if you allow there to be one. So what are you worried about today? Might you take a moment, might you take a day, 24 hours, and not worry about it and see what happens? Because not worrying about it for even a short length of time may help you get into the headspace to actually deal with whatever it is. But if you stay in it and you do what we call circular thinking, going on and over and around about over and again on something, it gets you nowhere. You're that hamster on the treadmill going round and round and accomplishing nothing. And that is not part of your journey. I'm here to tell you that is not part of your journey. Nowhere in life, no matter what you believe, no matter what you believe, again, not just me and my wacky Christian ways, no, nobody else says, yes, worry and fret about things. And that's the key to success. Nobody agrees. So what are you worried about today? Why? Because this and because that. Look, there's a million reasons when I ask why. And some of them may be justifiable. Some of them may be true. Some of them may be real. Some of them may be possibilities. But you can't also what we call fortune tell, which when we're worries, when we're worriers, when we're worried, a worried wart, we can tell the future because we do. But if I do this, then that's going to happen. And then this is going to happen. And then they're going to say that. And I know, I just know, I know they're going to do that and they're going to say that. And then when they do, then I'm going to be like, oh, right. I've played the worry game. It doesn't work. It doesn't get you anywhere. But when you go, you know what? I'm going to go into this situation with this confidence. And they may say this. They may say that. It's not, look, it's not unwise to be prepared for various situations and probabilities. But to worry about them is unwise. Okay. It is actually unwise. Why? Because it doesn't allow you to function in the proper now that will take care of the then, okay? So whatever you worry, again, I'm asking, what are you worried about today? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask you that question one more time and then say it, say it out loud. And if you're in a place where you can't say it out loud, whisper it, say it in your ears, you know, so say it in your ears, say it in your head to yourself or write it down and look at it. But what are you worried about today? Okay, I hear you. And that could be a very real situation, possibility, or road. But you know what? I'm here with you now. And we're going to get through to a space where you can handle the worry. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to breathe. You remember your breathing? If you've listened to the James Arnold Taylor podcast for any length of time, you know that I am a big advocate of breathing, not just breathing shallowly like we do throughout our day, but stopping and taking big, deep breaths. Why is it important? Why does it help with breathing? Uh, With uh, worry, rather. Why does it help with worry? Because it refocuses. Worry is just extra focus on one thing. So let's breathe. We're going to breathe in for four seconds. We're going to hold for seven seconds. We're going to blow out for eight seconds. Ready? Okay. Now, while I talk, I want you to do that some more. If you can, breathe in for four, hold for seven, blow out for eight. Really try to pull that breath from a deep, lower place. Concentrate. Imagine your back, your back, your lower back expanding and your lower stomach expanding to get that air. Not up in your chest, down low from the diaphragm. Okay, you're breathing, you're relaxing. The truth is, situations in life can be real, but the worry about them and the ache and the pain and the over, overthinking 
is only stress and will not change it. How do we change worrisome things? By looking at them with new eyes and confidence. I am confident. That's what I want you to say today. I want you to say it right now. Again, if you can say it out loud, say it out loud. I am confident. I am confident. Here's another thing I want you to say. You may say this is a little weird, but some of you that experience anxiety, panic, disorder, depression, anything like that will know exactly what I mean. I want you to say these words. I am real. Because some of you may experience what I have felt in my life at times, and that is a feeling of unreality, a feeling of not actually being real, a feeling like you're swimming in a pool of whatever, like you're just gelatinous blah, that you can only kind of feel a little and see through a little or get to a little, or it feels like you're dreaming or it feels like you're not really in your body or what have you. It's a feeling of unreality. Guess what? You are real. Say it with me. I am real. I matter. Say it with me. I matter. I can get through. I can get through. Not for selfish gain, not for motives to only be for you or the people around you that matter to you. Not to put down and condemn that person that may be giving you a bad time or causing your worry. But because you matter. And in so mattering, you don't need to put all that junk on them and you. Because it doesn't get you anywhere. It's like worry. I matter. And I hope and wish and pray for the best for any and all people that are causing me distress, discomfort, or worry, or a disbelief in myself. I can learn to forgive them, and I can move forward in my life. And hope and pray that someday they can as well. But that is not my burden. No matter who it is. No matter who it is, your spouse, your loved ones, your parents, your children, you have to let go of that worry and concern and and feelings of maybe even paranoia, abuse, neglect, what have you. Hope and pray the best for them and for yourself. Believe, believe, believe. That's the message of the James Arnold Taylor podcast this week. Believe, okay? Know what you believe, write it down, look at it, practice it. If you're a Christian, you know people talk about your testimony. That's a, that's a Christian term for those of you that don't know. So we, we talk about our testimony. Our testimony is our story, basically, of how we came to believe in a power greater than us, how we came to believe in God. Specifically, if you're a Christian, how you came to believe in Jesus Christ as actually, you know, not just a guy, not just a teacher, but actually God incarnate, which is what I believe and which is what some of you believe. So when we tell our testimony... We know that, but they say that it's a good thing to practice your testimony. Well, I have found it's a good thing to practice your testimony, but it's also a good thing to practice saying who you are and what you believe with confidence and assurance that you're on the right path. Okay. And again, I say it with my disclaimer. My big disclaimer for JAT listeners always is, as long as it is not hurting others, it is not condemning others, it is not for just materialistic gain. It's okay to make money. It's not okay to make money just because you just want a bunch of stuff. It has got to be for the right reasons. And I believe in you. And I believe that your motives can be that good and pure and strong. So what do we say? I am real. I am confident. I am strong. I am safe. I am okay. And I do not need to worry. So that worry that I mentioned earlier... I'm picturing disappearing. In fact, when you do your breathing then the rest of the day, and I want you to do this throughout the day, breathe in, do those breaths. And when you take that four seconds breath in, I want you to breathe in goodness. Envision the word goodness coming into you. All right. If you're a believer, if you're somebody that walks, and if you're not, but you're searching, 
Ask God in at that point too. God, come in, show me your way. And when you breathe out, and when you hold, so you breathe in for four seconds, you breathe in goodness, the word goodness. Envision the word goodness. Envision light and good things coming in as you breathe in and hold them there for seven seconds. Hold them and hold on to them. And then when you blow out, blow out all the bad and envision those words, negative, criticism, ugly, stupid, sad, dumb, not capable, all those things that have been put on you, all those things that you believe about yourself, all those things, picture them blowing out of you, literally going out of you. Close your eyes, get away, do this. Breathe in goodness, hold that. Breathe out the negative. Breathe out the negative. If you can only think of the word negative, then just envision blowing out the word negativity. Get rid of it. Take some time today. If you can, if you can give me five minutes after this podcast, you've listened to this podcast for, you know, 70 some odd minutes already. You're going to listen for another, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Take five minutes after that for you and do that. Okay. I believe in you. I haven't stopped. I believe in humanity. I believe in the goodness of people. I do. I believe that we can actually figure out a way to get through this chaotic mess that we have in this world right now with all these wonderful things that are such benefits to us as a society, as a, as a, as humanity, like, you know, satellites and phones and technology and all that. But I also see the mess that they're causing and I believe we can get through it to the other side. And I believe if all of us, part of this little JAT fellowship, believe that we can spread that out and push that out. And who knows, 20, 30 40, 50, 60 years from now, after I'm long gone, maybe, just maybe, somebody will still be holding on to those beliefs. Like I've believed and found through people like Norman Vincent Peale, uh, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien, Henri Nguyen, all these great theologians, Chesterton, uh, Spurgeon, Eldridge, great writers that have inspired and influenced me. I hope I can inspire and influence you. By believing you are worth more today and forgetting the lies that people have put on you or told you or that you are presently or have in the past put on yourself. Wipe them away. Breathe in good. Blow those lies away. All right. Do that for me today. Would you please do that for me? I'd so appreciate it. You know why? Because you need to feel life. You need to feel the goodness of it. That's what God wants for you. That's why he's put me in your life. So whether you believe in him or not, maybe just ask him, dude, and you can call God dude. Dude, if you really are what James says, then show me, show me who you are. Show that to me in some way that is undeniably you that I know is undeniably you. And then give me the ability to look past myself, even if I want to justify it to see that it's you. There is good in the world, Mr. Frodo. I believe it. I believe it. And I believe you're listening to the James Arnold Taylor podcast. What do you say we take some emails? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yes, James. Hello, and do dee and do doo That was very good. Thank you, Bob. I believe in Bob. Oh, I believe in me, too. All right, Bob. How are you? Good week so far? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, very good. Yes. Have you jumped out of any planes lately? Oh, yeah. Yes, this morning, as a matter of fact. I <laughs> I can't believe you jump out of airplanes. For those of you, if you're new to the show, Bob is uh, the fellow that list, uh, that goes through all your emails when you send an email to James Arnold Taylor. Uh, well, when you go to the jamesarnoldtaylor.com and you click on the Jack Show link and you go through all of those things and you submit an email here for the Jack Cast podcast, Bob is the fellow that reads through all those emails and chooses the ones that are going to be read on air. And Bob, in his free time, likes to jump out of airplanes, which is something I would never do. Oh, oh, no, no, I think you should try it someday, James. Well, I, I think you should uh, try something else. I don't. I have no catchy comeback for you, Bob. Oh, all right. All right, Bob, what do you got? We have one from Connor in the United Kingdom. Connor in the United Kingdom. What say Connor, Bob? Well, oh, yes, well, Connor says, Hey, James, I hope you're doing well. I'm just catching up with the podcast episodes that I've missed, and I have to say I'm really enjoying it, so keep up the great work. Well, thank you. 
You've been so many characters that I loved whilst I was growing up, especially Leonardo, and of course my favorite character from any franchise, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now that's a name I hear all the time. You, yes, yes. You're such an inspiration, and I can't thank you enough for your work. Well, thanks, Connor. My question is, what is it like working on both of these characters in video games? I used to always play the TMNT game and Clone Wars Republic Heroes when I was younger. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, people kind of ask, uh, and I, I think I've talked about it before, the difference between voicing a character that you've voiced a lot, you know, like I've voiced tons of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I've voiced a decent amount of Leonardo because we did the movie and everything. But then I also did the video game. So what's it like? doing a video game as opposed to doing them in a show or a film or something like that. It is different. And I think I've mentioned this before too, that it's like, you know, usually you'll have a different director and so they may be directing you differently. And because it's a video game and there's lots of action and the action is different than say what it would be on a film or a show. Uh, So it's different. You go in, in a different headspace. And so sometimes I question, you know, like, well, how would Obi-Wan do that for this? But I've been doing it for so long now, but it's it's fun. To me, it's not as much fun as doing them in the shows because they get little expansions more. You know, you get to kind of act more and tell stories. In a video game, you're doing more like, ha, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, and then just one-liners, you know, so it's it's kind of fun. I mean, well, look, it, it's all fun. I'm blessed to do what I do. I love all voiceover work that I do. But is it as fun as doing them in an animated show? Eh, not, not as much fun. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's just more work as to where on the show it feels more like you're just kind of getting to live in the character. In the video game, there's so many different cues and things you have to hit. It's more like work and you're not interacting with anybody else. So you're just kind of there, just kind of belting it out, getting it out, you know. And But still, video game work is still quite quite fun and good. I have a little uh, piece on my in my one man stage show talking to myself where it shows in my day in the life of voice actor stuff like what it's like to voice a video game. And that's kind of a fun little bit. I think it's on my YouTube channel. You can see that if you haven't seen my stage show. But thank you, Connor, for that. What else we got, Bob? Oh, and doobity dee and doobity doo. Yes. Let's see. There's one from Anna in the United States. Anna in the United States. What's she say? Anna says, hello, Jet. I have a couple of questions for you. All right, well, then I'll have a couple of answers for you. <laughs> All right, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Yeah, oh, yes. Um, what is your favorite Clone Wars villain? And what is your favorite fictional book? Our family loves listening to your podcast. Thanks for your time, Anna. Well, thank you, Anna. All right, Um, my favorite Clone Wars villain. Well, I'd have to say it's probably O.C. Sobek. Because I voiced O.C. Sobek. <laughs> because, you see, I'm full of myself. No, I'm not, really. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I, I do love O.C. Sobek, though, because he was fun to do. O.C. Sobek, for those of you that have not heard me say this a million times, O.C. Sobek was a character in The Clone Wars, and he was in, I believe, what, season three or four when we did the Citadel storyline, which was a great storyline. Uh, people trapped, uh, everybody trapped in the Citadel. O.C. Sobek was a cross between Christopher Walken and Al Pacino. And... He was somewhere right in here. And so he would, he would stretch the words like Christopher Walken, but then he also had a little hoo-ha from Al Pacino. So I took it and made it that way, you know. Um, and the way that came about was Dave Filoni asked me one day, he said, what would Christopher Walken as a villain sound like? And so I sent him various versions. I've tried to find it on the show. I think I've talked about it before on the podcast. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself. Or I tried to find my original auditions because I know they're somewhere. I have them somewhere. But anyways, um, I recorded various versions of OC. You know, one was straight up just Christopher Walken. Your Jedi resolve will get you nowhere. And then another would be like Christopher Walken. A little different. Your Jedi resolve will get you nowhere. You know, and then, like, then I landed on the ocean. Your Jedi resolve will get you nowhere. I landed on that, and he was like, yeah, that's the winner. That's the winner, winner, chicken dinner, which always makes me laugh. He didn't actually say that, but I'm saying that he said that right now because it's fun. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's, uh, 
I would say O.C. Sobek is my favorite villain. I really like him. There's a lot of good bad guys on the show. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not a fan of Darth Maul <laughs> because he's a jerk face. Thanos, Darth Maul, and Hank are a jerk face. We got to add to the, uh, my t-shirt. Hey, I'm not a jerk face, jerk face. Yeah, all right, Hank, whatever. What? Nothing. Thanos and Darth Maul are jerk faces. That's, that's my new t-shirt. If you listened to last week to the podcast, I talked about a t-shirt that says Thanos is a jerk face. Darth Maul's a jerk face too. But um, yeah, so I'd say O.C. Sobek. He's kind of a jerk face, but not really. I also like uh, Reiko Hardeen. Yeah, not necessarily a bad guy because Obi-Wan played him. And that was fun. Uh, and what is your favorite fictional book? Fictional book, fictional book, fictional book. Green Eggs and Ham. <laughs> It is. I love Green Eggs and Ham. I, I love Green Eggs and Ham and I love Mr. Brown Can Moo. Can you? Do you know Mr. Brown Can Moo? Can you? I'm going to get it. Hang on. I love this book. It's by Dr. Seuss. Mr. Brown Can Moo. Can you? A book of wonderful noises. I always think of D. Bradley Baker when I read this book. Because D. Bradley Baker, of course, the voice of all the clones, can also make just pretty much any sound. I'd love to have D on the show someday and do this with him or a video. I should do that. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be a fun video. But uh, I'll read you. I'll read this, you know. Uh, I'll read Mr. Brown Camus Can You to you the way I read it because it's one of my favorite books. It's a fictional book. <laughs> I know, Anna, that you were asking probably about like bigger books and stuff. But uh, here's Mr. Brown Can Moo. And in fact, this will be the uh, this will be the reading for the, this week. I'm just going to do it in different voices as as I go along. Okay. Oh, the wonderful things Mr. Brown can do! He can go like a cow. He can go. <coughs> Mr. Brown can do it. How about you? And now you. He can go like a bee. Mr. Brown can. <coughs> How about you? Can you go? <coughs> he can go like a cork. He can go like a horse. He can go like a squeaky shoe. He can go like a rooster. He can go like an owl. How about you? He can go like the rain. Dibble, dibble, dibble. Dibble, 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 dibble. He can go like a train. Oh, the wonderful things Mr. Brown can do. Dibble, dibble. Mr. Brown can do it. How about you? Mr. Brown can whisper, whisper. Very soft, very high. Like the soft, soft whisper of a butterfly. Maybe you can too. I think you ought to try. He can go like a horn. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Like a big cat drinking. Slurp, 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 slurp. He can go like a clock. He can tick. He can talk. He can go like a hand on a door. Tick tock, tick tock, knock, 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 knock. Oh, the wonderful things Mr. Brown can do. Bloop, bloop, slurp, slurp. And a hoo hoo hoo. He can even sizzle sizzle. He can do that too, like an egg in a frying pan. How about you? Mr. Brown is smart, as smart as they come. He can do a hippopotamus chewing gum. Grum, 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 grum. Mr. Brown is so smart, he can even do this. He can even make a noise like a goldfish kiss. Boom, 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 Mr. Brown is a wonder. Boom, 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 Mr. Brown makes thunder. He makes lightning splat, splat, splat. And it's very, very hard to make a noise like that. Oh, the wonderful things Mr. Brown can do. Moo, moo, buzz, buzz, pop, pop, eek, eek, hoo, hoo, clop, clop, dibble, dibble, dop, dop, cock a doodle doo, grum, 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 choo, 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 boom, boom, splat, splat, tick, tock, tick, sizzle, sizzle, blurp, blurp, knock, 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 a slurp and a whisper and a fish kiss too. Mr. Brown can do it. How about you? That is Mr. Brown Can Moo, Anna. That is one of my favorite books. <laughs> I know I'm a silly one. 
But, uh, you know, outside of that, uh, what else do I like? Fictional books? Oh, Lord of the Rings books are great. Uh, the um, Chronicles of Narnia are great. Uh, f- fictional book. It's a fictional book, but it's, uh, I think, probably my favorite in that would be The um, the Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. Because it's, it is a, it's a dream story. So it's fictional in that. But it's a wonderful story. And uh, I, I love that one. So there you go. Right, so check it out. C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. Very short story. Very easy to read. And it is about a trip to heaven or the way station between here and heaven uh, on the way to heaven. It's a very interesting book, no matter what you believe. All right, everybody. I believe in you. Mr. Brown can too. Thanks for listening to the show. Oh, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. I liked hearing my older British cousin Copernicus read Mr. Brown Can Moo to you. Oh, is that who that voice was? That was Copernicus? <laughs> Copernicus. He's got that old British voice. Yes. He's my relative from London, Pip Hip Cheerio. Oh, very good. I like that. We got a new character. Copernicus from London. All right. We got a lot of Brits on this show. Hey, uh, Mr. Announcer Guy, will you close the show out for us? That 90 minutes went fast. But that's because it's actually 80 minutes. Oh, well, see, but I recorded... And then I edited, and and after editing, it ended up being 80 minutes, but it really was like 90 minutes when I was recording it. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumi Go Inc. Recorded at Jet Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking Myself, the podcast, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for believing. I believe in you. I hope you listen more. Yes, it is all true. <laughs> Goodbye. Ta-ta. See you later. Pip-pip cheerio.